And we're back. We're week 36. We're on day two, and we're continuing in the book of Ezekiel. Today, specifically, we're looking at chapters 21 through 24. Now, Ezekiel and prophets like Ezekiel uh, were often given messages by God that were uh, in some way uh, picture messages, if you will, or lessons that they might learn, examples. Well, today we're going to get a lot of imagery that is that Ezekiel uh, speaks from God about. And it's not so very comfortable imagery. Uh, one is the sharpened, polished, slashing sword. Now, we don't have a lot of experience of swords nowadays, but for them, they're probably well too aware of the damage and the danger of slashing swords when we look at uh, the fact that they had just been besieged and taken from their home place by a foreign power, by foreign army, to now Babylon. Uh, so that would not be very comforting to them. Uh, another image, a fire that melts metal, burning away impurities. And if you've ever had the chance to watch a blacksmith and how they work, uh, you know, again, it takes a lot of heat, a lot of pounding in order to reshape and reform the metal into a new and uh, useful, hopefully, uh, product. And then there is the boiling pot. Now that's something that even now today we're familiar with. And we probably remember the lessons that our parents taught us or that we have taught with other others about, you know, being careful around boiling water or boiling oil because of the damage that it can do, the burning that it can do. And while boiling water and even boiling oil can be useful for cooking and things like that, there also is an inherent danger to it. Well, these are really um, good images that Ezekiel shares on behalf of God regarding the judgment that has been placed on Jerusalem. And like I said, some are very familiar and achingly so. But then there's also another one, probably one that many of us have read, maybe not understood, or we didn't understand what exactly was going on. Ezekiel was married. He was uh, a married man, and he very much beloved his wife. <clears throat> But God tells him that his wife is going to die. Now that in itself would be horrible enough. But then God commands Ezekiel that he will not be allowed to mourn his wife. Now, having just lost my dad earlier this year, to then be told that I couldn't mourn him, that I couldn't weep over him would have been horrific. How do you internalize all of those feelings and, and how damaging is that? We would wither away or um, uh, pine away in our grief. Well, as Ezekiel is told he's not going to be allowed to do that because he is meant to demonstrate to the people what it means not to grieve and not to um, express their grief and their sadness over, in this case, the temple. The temple has been torn down, it's been destroyed, which means that the place, the throne of God, where God would meet his people on earth has been destroyed. And so by the temple being destroyed, their opportunity to meet with God has been uh, destroyed and diminished. And yet, are they grieving or are they pining away? Are they losing themselves as a result? It makes us today so grateful for the opportunities to worship and the freedom that we have to worship. And so the question then is, are we actually using that freedom to worship God? Are we taking advantage of the fact that we can go to God at any time, that we can gather together in the sanctuary and worship the one true God who so loves us that he gave us the greatest gift ever, his own son as a savior to pay for the sins that we ourselves had committed and could never make up on our own. Are we in fact living out what God wants us to live in worshiping him and grateful for all that he does?